I call the honourable member for Warnan. Uh, Madam Speaker, I rise tonight to speak on a wonderful development for this nation, the signing of the free trade agreement between Australia and China. This agreement is going to have a long-lasting legacy for our nation, a long-lasting legacy for our agricultural sector, a long-lasting legacy for our services sector. It is an incredibly important document. And I must start by congratulating the Trade Minister, Andrew Robb, for the wonderful job that he has done in bringing this negotiation to a conclusion. Others tried over a sustained period of time and failed, yet within 12 months the Trade Minister of Australia delivered not only this agreement but a historic agreement with Japan and a historic agreement with South Korea. But it is the China agreement that I want to focus on, although, Madam Speaker, I also wouldn't mind focusing on the one we're going to do with India and the 12-month time frame that we've set for that agreement, which also, which also will set us up for the future as well. But let's concentrate on China and what it has delivered to start with for our agricultural sector. It has delivered for our dairy sector. It has delivered for our beef sector. It is delivered for our wool industry. It is delivered for mutton and lamb. It has delivered for our wine industry. All those key sectors for our agricultural constituency have been delivered for. And there can be no complaints, no complaints about how this has set up our farmers to capitalise on the huge growth that we are seeing and will continue to see. Uh, when it comes to demand for our agricultural exports. But it's just not our agricultural exporters which are going to benefit from this as well, also our services sector. And as those in this chamber will all know, it is the services part of our economy which is the growing part of our economy. This is where our future lies, whether it be in health services, whether it be in education services whether it be in aged care services, whether it be in legal services, financial services. These are the growth areas of our economy. Why, Madam Speaker? Because these are the key growth areas in our urban centres. And whether we like it or not, it is the urban population that is growing in Australia, and that is where the majority of our population is going to continue to grow. So this agreement delivers for the two key sectors of our economy, the agriculture sector and the services sector. It also will enable stability for our mining industries because they now have surety of access into that Chinese market. So it is a win also for them. But how are we going to capitalise on this agreement? We have now paved the way for enabling our exporters to get access to this Chinese market. But does that mean we rest on our laurels? No, it does not. What it means is we now have to focus on making Australia and our industries as competitive as we possibly can. And can I say to those opposite, you need to get out of the way and enable us to do it. What we ha now have to focus on is to make sure that we have an efficient and effective tax system. We have to make sure that we've got a workplace relations system which will enable our employment to grow and especially our young people to be able to get jobs. We have to make sure that our economy is as competitive as possible because if we do that, then we will be able to get the job growth, the job growth and the prosperity that we need to make this country great into the future. It's great now, but we have to make sure it continues to so. It also means that we will be able to finance a world-class education system, a world-class health system, which our people want us to be able to deliver. So this government is setting the path to our future prosperity. We are creating pathways to Asia which were unimaginable even 12 months ago. But we have to make sure, we have to make sure that our nation can capitalise on this. The job has begun, 
but we will make sure as a government we finish it.